Hello, and thank you for joining us for La Mama Live Talks tonight. Uh, my name is John Isendorf. I am the Director of Audience Development here at La Mama. And about a year ago, we had a conversation with the three guests that we have tonight. And um, it was, I think it was one of the more popular live talks that we had. And so I decided to call them, bring them back and, um, and see where everybody is at this point. So um, let's bring on our guests and I'll uh, introduce them. Hi, hi, hi. So we have, hello, we have uh, Megan Finn from The Tank. We have Teresa Buchheister from The Brick. And we have Mo Youssef from Target Margin Theater. Thank you guys for joining me again for this live talk. Um, so I thought we would start with uh, wh where, what have you been up to for the past year? Um, we had this conversation, it was a little less, less than a year ago, I think that we had this conversation um, and it was emotional and it was at the beginning, um, sort of towards the beginning of, of what was happening. And I think we were at a point where things were just sort of starting to settle in, like it wasn't going to be like a six week uh, lockdown. So um, why don't we start with um, Mo, what have you been doing and what has Target Margin been up to? Well, wow, John, it, it, yeah, it was, um, I, I feel like I was still like reeling a little while after that conversation um, that we had and I was really happy that you invited us like back for this reunion. Um, yeah, there was something about the spirit of that conversation that really stuck with me. And since then, I mean, I shaved my beard. I guess that's the most important thing <laughs> that happened. I fully committed to the baldness, you know, like there's no more like just just shave it off. And, um, oh, you know, have been really um, t taking this moment to slow things down, just really slow it down, slow it down. Like from uh, and it's a good practice to have, I think, from that moment where in, when something happens and you have this immediate response and the more that you can slow it down, you know, um, respond, not react, those types of things um, has been really good. And at Target Margin, I think we've been doing the same, you know, immediately um, when we shut down, we, we didn't do anything. We stopped, you know, we just, let's take care of the people in our company. Um, let's take care of ourselves. Let's call our mom, <laughs> let's do these basic things that we don't do, the care that we don't normally do because we're just like working. And, um, and then of course, like we, we, we started to do things, you know, we, we had a face mask program uh, and we worked with a community partner and some amazing designers, um, you know, Dina Al-Aziz, Norman D. Sherwood and Asta Annie Hostetter were great partners in that. And, um, you know, did some work with our mutual aid group in South Brooklyn and used our space as a, as a garage there. So, you know, we couldn't make shows and, and we talked about this a little bit before and I was like, you know, we didn't do digital work because we're just not good at that stuff. I mean, I mean, it was just one of those things where I was like, I'm not gonna get, you know, like Josh Gelb is like doing some amazing wow. little shout out to Josh, right? Like Josh, who's like artist in residence at La Mama, I think. And, and um, uh, doing some amazing work. And I knew as soon as Josh was doing that stuff, I was like, I can't do this, I, I'm not doing this. Uh, I can't compete with him. Um, and we kept it in person in, in smaller ways. I guess we thought, you know, um, if we can reach 10 people, we did some work in, in the fall in storefronts in Sunset Park with a bunch of different artists who, were, who did weekend pop-ups with um, partners there. So it was socially distanced and safe and it was for anyone who was passing by and then we did some work at our theater that David directed where nobody came in, you know, we just opened it up. You could stand on the sidewalk and look inside. Yeah, I and that. that's like how that's been our approach to it. Just really small, um, really focusing on the people, you know, um, that's the most important thing. So, yeah. And, um, and Teresa, how have you been? Well, uh <laughs> I've cried many more times since May 
uh, but yeah, I mean, it's been a, a year. So I, I, a lot of what Mo said really resonates with me. And also we express those shared values in different ways based on uh, where we're physically at, what our resources are, who are the people that are expressing need to us. Um, so, you know, we, uh, I guess like I was trying to think of a handful of things that have happened since then. So Lauren Miller and Jess L. Macy and I continued doing our Twitch live stream show every week for 53 weeks, yeah. uh, which, you know, our document still says programming for the next three weeks um, because it's sort of a, a reminder that we thought we were only going to do it for three weeks. Um, and then we did it for 53. Uh, and then we've recently handed that over to two interns that I had worked with, Kate Ziblick and Harriet Veldkamp. Uh, Harriet's 19, Kate's 21. Uh, the rest of their team is, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21. And they're doing it monthly. They wanted to do it weekly. And I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> I promise you. And I love you and I support you and I will be here for you. You don't want to do it weekly. So they're, they're doing it. And their uh, first uh, programming was uh, on April 18th. And it was fantastic. Um, so that's continuing. And, you know, now we have this whole uh, history of the year uh, out of an abundance of caution on Twitch of just like conversations and performances and um, music, theater, all, I mean, so many different things. So that was a thing. Uh, then, you know, I realized the need pretty quickly for public bathrooms for myself. The Shortly after this meeting, I got my first like iced coffee at a walk up thing where I could go get it. And then I was like, I'm gonna go hang out in a park. And then I took three sips and that immediately I was like, where's the closest bathroom? This is about to be disastrous. And luckily, reveal, I had keys to Ryan William Downey's apartment, which was nearby and I just used them. Uh, but then it, you know, that's about access, right? I had keys to a friend's apartment uh, in that neighborhood. So uh, when things went down uh, after the murder of George Floyd, we were like, we got to open our bathroom. Um, people need to go to the bathroom. And then a bunch of other needs became expressed during that time as well. So we were open uh, seven days a week for protesters for June and July and August, and then went down to five days in September because it started to started to transition to other needs. It was the protest, but then it was also uh, people in the neighborhood and starting to uh, work with the North Brooklyn mutual aid and um, recognizing the voter registration we did in September too, combined with uh, these things. So uh, we did that through to November. And then, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I got really tired. And we don't have a volunteer coordinator. It was me and, uh, and volunteers got tired. And uh, so we that's when we decided to start uh, working more directly with the North Brooklyn Mutual Aid to say, like, how can we still be useful, even though this thing that we were doing uh, is not sustainable in the way that we were doing it. Um, then we also did a gallery show for all of October featuring comedians that I love, uh, Lorelai Ramirez, Tim Platt, Faria Khan, Tawanda Gona, Felipe Depoy, Marissa Goldman, and Whitley Watson uh, with beautiful sound design by Drew Weinstein. Um, and we did that because galleries could be open. So we were like, well, uh, let's get a HEPA filter. We've been having people safely use the bathroom for months. Uh, could we have people come in and look at art in this space? Um, and it was also inspired by vital joint closing, which happened shortly after this meeting. The other space I was struggling to save, um, that struggle was ended for me. It wasn't up to me. It happened. Uh, not happy about it, uh, <laughs> you know. 
And, but, you know, the community came together to sort of help me figure out how to move. We were told to move out on the day that Ryan's wife gave birth. Um, so he couldn't help me. So our options were, hey, friends, can anyone help? You have to wear a mask. I, I don't know. I don't know how to move during a pandemic. Ah. Um, so that, and then we tried to drink all the beer that we could. We had two fridges full of beer that we had stocked. Um, so we did that. And then we also did the Exponential Festival um, completely digitally, which was an ongoing conversation because we, in May, we didn't, we were like, we'll definitely be open by January. Um, and then when it became clear that that might not be true, we had to move forward with something. So we had 31 new digital shows by artists and we worked closely with each of them. We let a lot of them shoot in the brick uh, for free so that they could have more than their living room to work with. Um, oh, and the Sound Lab. We had just started Sound Lab when, that, uh, when we had this meeting. That's uh, me and Harrison David Rivers, who's the best playwright. If you don't know him, you need to go to his website immediately and read all of his plays. Um, and we had just uh, sadly rejected a bunch of people so that we could accept four uh, to do this playwrights writing uh, fiction audio content. Um, and now we're gonna produce them because they <laughs> created some really incredible stuff. And uh, like, I'm a voiceover director, so we don't know exactly how we're going to afford it. But, um, you know, I've been directing voiceover remotely this whole time as well. So we're, we're figuring that out. And th these pieces are incredible and they need to happen. And um, we're like, we could make pitch decks and help you pitch it to Audible and all those places. And they're like, actually, we'd actually just like them to happen mm -hmm. and happen with our artistic input. So can we just do them? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. Let's figure it out. That's awesome. When are you going to do those, Jason? Um, our timeline is we're working on a couple of projects right now um, to sort of beta test some things. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to work on each of them one every three months. So we'll cast one while one is recording so that they'll sort of dovetail. So it'll be like one is uh, the first one is actually going to be performed by Mariam Bazid, who's amazing, and it's a one-person thing, and their design, their sound design is going to be really cool, um, but they should perform it, period. That's something that we learned over the course of this as well, because we let the writers sort of t t lead us and say, what are you creating? And it doesn't have to be a six episode fiction podcast that fits into this mold. We don't <laughs> want to do that. You don't want to do that. What do you want to do? So Miriam's thing uh, we'll do first. And then while that's happening, we'll cast another one. Uh, and then Miriam's will go into post while we're recording the next one and so on and so forth. So if you're interested in auditioning or helping in any way with that, uh, you know, let me know. Awesome. That'd be cool. Awesome. And Megan, I feel like, I, I don't know of any theater that's done more than the tag. <laughs> um, but how, first of all, how are you? And then how is the tag? No, I mean, I really, I'm, I'm cognizant of the time and I want to make sure we get some good chatting in before Mo has to hop off the, the stream. So um, yeah, we've, we've, you know, I, I drank the Kool-Aid on, on this idea right after, and it, it's probably a very, a very different path, but I think, you know, it's a time for multitudes and this was the one that we chose um, because my thinking was really like, when the artist started coming to me, you know, I was like, okay, well then this is what's wanted. So this is what we'll continue to do is try to make this space. So long story short, you know, since, since March we've done, I just looked up the numbers, 407 uh, shows, live streams or et cetera of the work of 2,584 artists. Um, and, you know, that's what we've done. <laughs> and, and the best like, this virtual gala, I'll say. My oh, thank you. Thank you. And we've done, and we did, um, you know, there, what I started doing was kind of seeding, you know, seeding resources and money. And I did not do this alone by any means. Um, my incredible partners 
um, Danielle King, who's the managing producer and uh, Johnny Lloyd, the dir director of artistic development together, you know, it's been, we've seeded money into and, and resources into, into kind of dream projects that we thought could had something to say in this, in this medium. And so we've done um, nine of those over the, uh, over the, since, since this, since last fall and um, all different sizes and varieties and also partnered, you know, I'm, I really am a big, you know, it's, we, it, we always partner, right? But like, when you're making the raft together, you know, rather than worrying about who's going to, you know, it's like, well, let's work together and, and figure out how we can be mutually supportive. So a lot of those projects have all been through partnerships with um, On Guard Arts. We're, we're doing this show with Bushwick Star and New York Theater Workshop right now, Taxilandia uh, and Oye Group. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I mean, just like thinking, trying to trying to just say who who are the who are the partners and who are the makers and how can we keep making space for artists um so and you know i think uh i think i'm i really admire both target margin and the brick you know for all the for all the stuff that's happened this year it's been a it's been a it's been insane <laughs> i mean the fact that it's been a year is bonkers to me it doesn't, you know, you know, you say that, right? You say like, um, oh, it doesn't feel like it's been a year, but then in some ways it feels like it's been five years, other things, right? But this did not feel like a year. When we, when I was looking back, it just doesn't feel, it feels like a few months ago that we talked. And I feel like maybe I let a lot of time go by. I could have learned a skill or something, but. Um, no, 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 no one can learn anything right now. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed with you, Mo. Mo is make, is making all these steps to change thinking and and broadening perspective, and I'm 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 very impressed. That's a good that's, well, that's a good segue because we're gonna what's the, what I, the, I thought we'd find out like what we've been doing since we talked last and what we're doing next. So why don't we start with Mo? Mo, what's next for you and for Target Market? I feel like I've set myself up for failure though. No, no, no. When I'm back in my old ways later, you'll just. Good, who cares? <laughs> That's fine. We like the old you. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> we won't judge you. <laughs> it's really the self judgment that gets me. My own. Uh, uh, Mo, I think we froze. Mo froze. He, he started his journey already. Mm. He'll come back. Wait okay. for that. Mm. Oh no. Are Wait. you back? I, Mo, we think you froze. Are you going to be with us? <laughs> Live TV. Live TV. Anyway. Um, well, we'll hope Mo comes back. And why don't we pass on to um, Teresa, what's next for you and the brick? Totally. And as soon as Mo like shivers even a bit in there, I'll, yeah. I'll be like, um, oh, is this Mo? Yes. <laughs> You're back. Hey. It's Sorry. still happening. <laughs> we, thought you, we thought you started your journey already. Oh yeah, I was just like, just <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it's great I, I used to whenever anything would freeze I would just start moving like this until it would stop but then I realized I was just doing that for way too long um <laughs> where were we <laughs> what's next for Mo and target margin oh yes I've um I've resigned you know, I guess that was the uh, the, fir the first uh, major choice, which was a good personal decision for me. And, you know, um, I love Target Margin. I should just, you know, say that. And David, it's been one of my biggest supporters and, and champions. But, you know, as we were talking about earlier, this was, look, a, there was a moment here and the, the work that I needed to do was, a, was, was bigger than that. And so it felt right. You know, a very long run right, one, runway, though, you know, um, so we're currently looking for someone to 
you know, take the company into a new place, like not fill my role because that's also not going to be good for the organization, but where is it headed um, and what's the vision and, and who's really going to lead it with David. So, so that's pretty exciting. Um, so then that leaves me without a job, which is great because I've had a job since I was 14 and now <laughs> is, is a moment where, um, you know, I'm going to bust out on my bike. I guess that's the thing. I've spent a number of years trying to get these legs strong. Uh, I did go actually, I had like a physical therapist, like bike fit person, because I'm going to bike for 4,000 miles coast to coast. And it's a good idea to like, make sure my bike fit me. <laughs> like, you know, like I could ride around Brooklyn yeah. on it, but like, let me just do that. And uh, he like squeezed my butt and he squeezed my leg. You know, it was just testing everything. And he was like, uh -huh. strong legs, weak ass. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Like, All right. <laughs> so that's what's next. Yeah, July to October, pending, you know, uh, any hand injury that I'm, I'm trying to rehab right now. I'll be, I'll be biking from Oregon to uh, probably right back to New York City. And then from there... I'm going to rely on the kindness of strangers. You know, look, if you've got a, you got a place that I can crash at, hit me up. Um, <laughs> support, support, uh, some local support. That's great. Um, and, uh, and just, you know, use that time after to connect with family and do some real, you know, um, visioning, re-envisioning of uh, the way I want to work and, and the values that I want to see and, and what I do and, you know, try to make that contradiction between our stated values and our actions, like a little bit, you know, more aligned. Mm -hmm. Good for you. That's, it's brave to do that, right? It's, I think it's brave. I think too. I don't know, like, do you have um, an extra bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> I live in a studio. <laughs> we'll That's find you, we'll find you space. What were you going to say, Megan? No, I mean, I think that we, uh, it's also going to be interesting for you, Mo, to see how time operates for you. I mean, we've all had a different, like we were talking about how a year has passed. We all have a different sense of time right now as a result of this experience that we've all been in. But also as theater people, we mark time by shows, you know, and that is not, <laughs> that is not a, I don't know, that is not the only measurement of time <laughs> and so it's very confusing Ta the way time moves when you're working project to project is very it's very confusing and you know years whole years can go by where you're not assessing like you're saying like how much time am I spending alone am I allowing myself time alone am I what am I what am I not learning about who I am right now um, because I'm so you know I'm living my life in small goals, you know, um, that's always just ta-da, <laughs> and then and then restart, ta-da. I mean, that's <laughs> that's like our life. That's what we do here. Um, so yeah, so I I'm really in, I'm excited. Whatever, even if you fail out there, I'm excited to hear about what you learned along the way. Are you going to journal? I am not going to journal. I might um, take some photos. Um, whoa, the whole tada thing, that's real. That is real. It's, it, and then the satisfaction from that, you know, that like, um, that feeling is so good <laughs> as well. Um, and I think I've been, yeah, I was talking about this before, but that the idea of even, one thing I had not considered was that even making work was a way of distancing myself from that just going like oh who who am I I had this <laughs> I, I was telling a friend I had this moment where you know when I realized you know I should step away and take some time for myself I felt really good I felt immediately liked I and I knew that I was like oh it was the right choice I, I I'm not feeling bad about this decision I, it feels good and then like a couple of months later I felt like someone was tapping me on the shoulder when I turned around it was just a little voice and it said who are you? And I went, oh no. <laughs> like, oh fuck. Not up. Yeah. Yeah. This is exciting. Uh, Ta-da! Ta <laughs> so Megan, what's next for, for you in the brick? Uh, you in the tank, sorry. Um for me, um, I am going 
to, we're, I mean, this, we're, you know, we're not done. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't over. I think that the next period of time is actually maybe the most critical, I don't know how you feel, Teresa, but maybe the most critical time actually of this whole experience because we're going to figure out how to, you know, the stop and start of how and how we're coming back. Um, and so I'm trying to, for the tank, we're, you know, we have a big outside festival we're doing with On Guard Arts and ADNY in, in May. I'm going to be directing for the first time in a, over a year, um, which is like I had a design meeting and I like cry through the meetings <laughs> um, because it's so, I love, I, you know, whatever I, I you know my experience has been you know I've had that little voice in my head that's like oh you know is this who you are like is this is this arts artist who you are you know or, or could you go and do something else like could you pick up and and go do something else and I think in this year this is not a judgment at all because I'm I'm 100% on the same page with you with you Mo for me I was like oh okay no <laughs> like there's no there there for me. And I like producing and I've, you know, I'm happy that we've spent this time making this um, space for artists. And, you know, um, it's been, it's been a hustle and, and a good, a good, good thing. But like I, that, but for me, like when I don't have that, when I don't have the, honestly, when I don't have rehearsal, at least some of the time, I don't need it all the time, but at least some of the time I'm, I'm, I feel very at sea in this work because I, I'm feeling very, uh, um, yeah, just, just at sea in it. Like it's not, I can't, I can't get grounded cause I'm not in the room ever. And so I've learned that about myself, but, um, but in terms of the tank, you know, we're going to, we're doing the outside stuff. Um, I think cyber, I think we're in this moment where like, I don't know what's happening with the virtual stuff. People don't want to watch it anymore. Or like, you know, there's like this, we're like, uh, you know, <laughs> and so I think, but I think we should keep talking about it and keep it happening because I think in terms of accessibility and in terms of having, having a broader conversation about what our work is doing and being able to connect, you know, people internationally. I mean, there's so much cool, like there's so much good, good stuff that can continue to happen. And I think we need to continue the conversation and figure out how to continue to, um, to have it be a part of, of what we do. Uh, but like there, and then we're gonna open, we're gonna start having performances at the tank proper in June. Um, and so, you know, my plan is to just uh, figure out, you know, with, with Johnny and Danielle, we're just figuring out like how we can move through this next period so that we can get back into some kind of groove. Um, and if we have federal funding at the, you know, if we get federal funding, it's going to make that process easier. Um, and it's going to be harder if we don't, um, but we're going to still, still, still sort it out. So personally, I'm going to direct lots of plays. Anybody awesome. have a play? Send me I, a play. <laughs> I think you're one of the best directors in New York City, Megan. I think your work is amazing. I really do. Very sweet. Um, Mo, I think we're going to lose you again, but on purpose this time have to go but I'm gonna stay I want to wait to hear about how Teresa okay okay great <laughs> awesome so if I talk for a long time you'll stay I won't do that um and that's sweet um well uh similar to both of you in ways I mean like so many other people uh if we get federal funding then it, <laughs> we're like we'd be capable of so many things. And we're just like, oh my gosh, these are the things we could do, but don't hope for it too much because that might not happen. So that's hard uh, because yeah, that that would be awesome. But I also have very low expectations. In Teresa, do you want to explain what that federal funding is just for anybody that might not yeah. know? Yeah. So basically uh, there's been no federal funding since like, this time last year uh and it was very small um so Did you get I, any of it 
what did you get any of it because we didn't yeah i mean you know besides basically, like a ppp did you get like cares act oh no just ppp yeah yeah so that ppp basically everything was like building a bridge out of like straw over uh a volcano you know this last year is like well that one more piece of straw everyone cool to get on this piece of straw with me you want to go back down the volcano great great i'm gonna just keep <laughs> trying to build this bridge as i go um <laughs> and sometimes you know like sometimes it was like okay that's it i mean after losing vital joint uh and the continuation of things and after losing so many more people uh the idea of loss of space became sort of like okay and you know i think we talked about this last time but uh, spaces come and go in new york all the time and you you love them and they don't last and that's okay or they change into something you hate i'd rather close um but yeah, so that it's been a, a tricky thing. So that continues. So the the money, this federal funding, so nothing's really been available since last year. And so this is more significant. I think it was passed in December. So everyone was like, ooh. And now we're like, okay, it's almost May. And um, <laughs> that excitement Wait, I, 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 is I like, I need some money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically if you can prove that you are a very particular kind of small business uh, performance space uh, you can appeal for uh, the amount of income you lost um and you 45 45 percent yeah yeah oh yeah yeah if not all of it oh my gosh if we could all play, appeal for all of it that would be incredible but even that amount is i mean in a when you're on the top of a volcano on a straw bridge you're like give me that money um so if we get it then oh my gosh watch out we're gonna be doing some stuff if we don't um we might have to try to freeze as many things as we can it wouldn't be the first time um so definitely like calling up our cpas and being like we're not we're not gonna pay you right now uh becomes very much like which credit card's working you know, but I'm not taking out credit cards. Don't worry, uh, mom and dad, if you watch this later. Um, but also, if you're if you're a fan of of the theater, you're of any of these theaters that we work at currently. You're and we don't get the funding. You're by all means find your local Hard Rock Cafe and enjoy <laughs> <laughs> enjoy the the entertainment fair that they have locally available. <laughs> Yes, I, I hope that every Hard Rock Cafe is saved with federal money for the important art that happens in them. It's a great mission. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you got to rock. You know what I mean? You Hard. Rock. Hard. Hard. <laughs> with a latte. Um, so, so yeah, that will determine some things for us. Uh, it was, uh, the, the rollout was a massive failure. So the, the first round of people who can apply, which does not include us, we're in the second round, uh, are just now being able to get their applications in this week. Um, we can put ours in very soon. So anywhere for, for all of these places, anywhere between like one and six weeks, you know, people will start finding out. So what our future looks like really depends on if we get that. Um, it's, yeah, so it's it's hard to plan, but I know at this point that I'll stay in New York, that I'll keep doing things, whether or not I have space, um, always have, always will, I'll figure it out. Um, but having space uh, is a great responsibility, but it also allows you to do a lot uh, for more than just yourself. And so that's why I, one, the main reason I like having it and that sort of umbrella is all of the other things that we do. Um, but if that goes away, then it goes away. Uh, and so that will determine a lot of what's going on with the brick, but we do, we're continuing with, uh, we also started an online education program in last June. So we'll continue with that. Um, it's really affordable trying to uh, teach people skills that they can use to to work remotely in particular was sort of what we were doing this last year but uh, you know we're open to so many other ideas as 
as we go. Um, the, the main thing is, is you're not going to get rich teaching. So uh, if that's your goal, go somewhere else. Um, but we, yeah, we want to educate people for a, a really affordable fee for something that is really useful to their well and happiness. Uh, happiness. So, so the balance of what Megan and Mo are talking about, you know, full transparency, like I, I've been depressed my whole life. Uh, but this year has been really hard because all my uh, mechanisms for sort of dealing with it and getting through the dark period and just hanging on until it's light again were completely demolished by this. And I, you know, when you think it's only going to be for six weeks, you're like, okay, I can deal. And I'm probably, you know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, so that's been pretty brutal. So I definitely need to take better care of my mental health, which is why I'm in Kansas right now. Um, and moving forward with that, that's a priority. And it's, it's hard because I think probably all three of us do things uh, historically where we're like, well, I'm pretty sure I need this, or maybe I don't even know that I need this, but <laughs> probably other people can recognize it but I'm not going to do it and I'm not going to prioritize it because I'm too busy because I'm doing this thing for somebody else because I have these other things on my to-do list or things that I'm concerned with. Uh, and, you know, years and years go by and you're like, oh man, I really take shit care of myself. Uh, and then it, it comes to a head at a certain point. And, and it, do, it doesn't help anyone that you're trying to help at all. Uh, so that, but then also, you know, being creative with the resources that we have, you know, um, our capacity is real small at 33%. It's only 25 people. So including, you know, performers and we want people to be safe. We also don't want to like get shut down because we're breaking a law. Um, and I love breaking the law, but like not in this instance. Uh, so what does that mean? And what kind of things can we do, um, and so I have plenty of ideas, but whether or not we get the money uh, helps us determine how feasible those are. Right, that's a big variable for you, for every, for all of us, I guess, too. I mean, the mamas applied for this this money as well. Um, so I, I was struck by something that um, that Teresa said about um, out an, uh, of an abundance of caution that now there's this um, this digital work that a year's worth of digital work that exists now. And for, 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 um, for Megan as well, that there, and La Mama too, we have, you know, it's been a year's worth of, of stuff that we've done online. Uh, we started a Patreon account for people to be able to view it. The, the idea was that it would be free first. And then if you wanted to watch it later or on demand, you'd have to pay for it. But that's so, antithetical to the theater right and i have i, I have friends who was like why don't you just make movies because they exist later you know you, they have a shelf life and all of a sudden we were forced to make um this work that now has a shelf life and um i think la mama like like everybody has said that we're going to continue to do the online work, that the access that people have, you know, physical access, they don't have to be in New York. They don't have, they can be, they can be physically challenged and, and come see the show. We've done all of it for free. So there's not a, a financial ba barrier to see it. Um, I wonder if, I don't know what I'm, I don't know where this is going. I guess, did, I guess, did we learn anything? Did we learn anything from this? As like as theater people, I wonder. Did Mo, we... do you have to leave? I'm sorry. I'm so I'm such a stage manager right now. N no, it's good. Thank you, Megan. I do have to run. Um, wow, John, you just asked a, a really deep question. Um, that was to get you to stay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, as you can tell, I don't want to go. Oh, uh, uh, I have to go. Um, he, you know, he, uh, whatever that line is from. That Brecht play. Um, so, <laughs> oh, 
I hope we have. I think the thing maybe the under what I'm getting from this question is like there is a thing that live performance being in space and community and convening does and seeing a live performance, which is fundamentally different than a film or another work of art. It does something to the human spirit soul, you know, and um, oh, instead of um, transposing that in another form, what 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 have we learned from maybe attempting to do that? And then what is what is this thing that is um, essential this to our existence as artists um, that we're trying to renew? So I'm thinking so much about that. Um, I don't know. Okay, I've got to go. Okay. Love you all. Thank you so much for doing this, Mo. Bye, John. Bye, Megan. Bye, Bye Teresa. Bye, Bye Chris. Um, just to jump off what Mo was saying, I hope we do too. I mean, I think that that I think that this is going to keep happening. It's going to continue. And it's up, it's going to be up to the institutions. I think it's so funny when people call us institutions because I'm like, I always like, it's like, well, <laughs> I mean, nobody works there. No, um, <laughs> like six people work at institution. Um, but, um, but it's going to be up to the theaters to like continue to have that conversation. I think that like anyone who thinks that, that, that it's going to go away, I really don't think it is. I mean, to talk, if you talk to theaters internationally, if you talk to, um, if you talk to people, you know, people like Z Jared Mazzacci or like, you know, people who've been, who've been mixing media and, and theater or film and, um, for so long, like, this is just another chapter in what we do. And it does not make any sense to throw it away. That doesn't mean everybody has to do it. It doesn't mean everybody has to enjoy it. it doesn't mean everybody has to, to watch it. But for those of us who have been doing it and watching it and, and making it, I haven't made a lot, but I've experienced people making it, you know, it, it has, it's, it's its own thing. And I think it's going to continue. I mean, theater didn't invent the internet and we had something to say on it. Um, and now it's going to, there's going to be a continued making on online and experiencing of stuff in the theater. And um you know, I think specific, we don't only do theater at the tank. We also do other, other genres of things. And I think we're going to be looking to live stream those things all the time. If we can create more revenue for the artists and, um, and I'll invite audiences, you know, wherever they are, then why would we, why wouldn't we, you know, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that you, you'll exhaust yourself trying to be everything for everyone, but, um, you know, there, there's definitely been a benefit to the accessibility of it. Um, some, some people have really thrived uh, in the new constraints of creation. Uh, for some people, it's not new. They were filmmakers to begin with, uh, but they're bringing their skills into a different uh, realm. Um, and yeah, so I think that there's a lot of value to it. And it's just sort of like, what do you have? I don't have time to continue doing out of an abundance of caution weekly, uh, but I can mentor some young people to connect to some artists all over the, the world and have them do it monthly. So I think if everyone is asking themselves those questions, then a lot is possible. Um, we also did, uh, so recently that it almost doesn't feel like the history of this effed up year, but we did live streams at the, the brick with John Berkland and Adele Overby from Zani Productions and our, uh, the, uh, Chris Ignacio was our first experiment. Um, and then uh, Nadia Pinder, Leonie Bell and Peter Mills Weiss and Julia Mounsey. All four of those are on the brick YouTube. You can check them out. So we did them live. And that was really important that they were live. Like I was in the booth, Chris was performing live. That. It was mind blowing. I and the, it was so good. there was an element to each of the performances that needed to be live. So it was it, it, for the creation to work, but the video looks really good because John Berklin is really great at what he does um, and is working with multiple cameras and 
uh, you know, creating a new kind of artistic expression for himself and what he does in combination with what we can do. And it was so, I was worried because I was like, what if I hate being in a theater making stuff with people again? I don't know, I might. Um, and I didn't, I loved it. It was great. I was there like 10, 12 hours a day, four days in a row. And then like, so who, who wants to have bourbon after? You know, I was like, I'm back. Um, yeah. So it felt nice. I can't do that every day, but yeah. uh, you know, it felt really good. So I think that that was a, a sort of combination thing. We're going to um, continue working with John uh, and finding new uh, avenues of, of creating within that. But it also takes up like the whole space, like the camera setup took up a lot of space. So it's not like uh, we could do that for every live show. Like those two things can't physically happen in the space at the same time every time, but there are variations on all of those things that can. I also got to participate last year in the experimental theater program that I did in high school with high schoolers from Manhattan, Kansas, um, because they opened it up to the alums and I'm doing it again this year. Um, and so to get to create a really cool, like we did an Arto beat piece based on Alice in Wonderland and, uh, and created it for, our new constraints of this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it, I, I haven't been able to go back and be a part of that uh, for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really cool to get to do. Uh, and my parents and my family have been able to watch stuff that they wouldn't have been able to see. Uh, and then times that by a million because of uh, all of the other people we can access. And yet being in a space is really special. So I think I'm more inclined to do less like runs of shows. Mm -hmm. I'm not like super convinced about the necessity of runs of shows. There, in the same way that it's like, is it necessary to do this live? Is it necessary to have a run of this? Yeah. Um, and what is a run and why are we doing that? Like, why are we taking time in this space together, inviting what might be a limited amount of people because of capacity rules? Um, I don't, you know, so I'm not super convinced that I want to see long runs of shows anymore, uh, but I am really excited to go see a bunch of things and I'm getting tickets for stuff all the time for as soon as I get back from Kansas. And as far as opening the, the space, it, Teresa, it's not, um, it, it, is it financially viable because of the small number? Uh, yeah, the small number makes it really impossible without this federal money. Um, because basically once we reopen, um, our landlord has every right to ask for full rent again, or at least 67%, <laughs> you know? Um, or, you know, more than he's, he's been very kind for a year to let us pay half. Um, and, and that changes as soon, as soon as we start doing shows, but we do it with this reduced capacity, uh, and that capacity includes performers, um, and we don't want to charge a buttload for tickets, uh, never did, never will, you know, so you start to think like, what is the value of the space that I'm running? If I have to charge a hundred dollars a ticket, then I'm not going to do it. You know, it's the same way when people are like, well, you could rent it out and people could do their like concept Shakespeare show. And I'm like, I, somebody else could run that space. I'm absolutely not interested in spending my valuable time doing something like that. Like I have a million other things I could do and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not the, a good use of my time and energy. Right. Good job. Yeah. I'm not a rental house. But mm -hmm. rentals are really helpful right now when we can't do other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, so so it's a really tricky conversation. If we open at that capacity without any federal support, then there's no way that we can survive. Yeah. Um, artistically, I have a million ideas, but it's just the the issue of can we even pay our rent? Right. Well, guys, we've come to sort of the end of the time that we've scheduled to do this. This was, um, there were no tears. There were almost tears, but there were no tears, which is, um, which is good. Does anybody have anything? Megan, what's the name of the show you're directing? 
It's called Lost and Found. It's a short new play by Karen Briscoe. Mm -hmm. It's part of Downtown Live. The tickets are free. Um, it's going to be in a loading dock in lower Manhattan. Um, and it runs for two weekends um, starting the weekend of May 14th. So you can get tickets at the tanknyc.org. Um, and yeah. Awesome. I still, I'm sure I can still direct plays, so it'll. <laughs> I'm sure you can. After all this, you're very sweet to say that. It means a lot to me. Um, and uh, yeah. And Teresa, what do you have anything you want to plug? Oh, sure. Well, I'm going to go buy that ticket for Megan's show right now. Uh, and as soon as this is over, I'm going to go watch. Uh, and this is probably where I'll cry. I'm going to go watch Brendan Drake dance. Uh, he's part, he's one of the uh, heirs fellows um at i don't know what it's called is it cpr is it shea bushwick is it the jonah bocare foundation yeah i got you you know what i mean uh but i'm i'm gonna go watch brendan dance which is really exciting um i'm working on some stuff i'm trying to write a chapter for a book which is really hard uh but that that'll get published if i actually uh, can do something worth publishing and then uh, as far as theater stuff goes, we're hoping to, Title Point's hoping to make a, a film project and do something for Halloween. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Um, and then, you know, I'm doing a, a ton of voiceover stuff. So directing a podcast, directing a cartoon, doing a bunch of audio books. Uh, ah. So that's been nice to have that as a creative outlet as well. You know, I, I love doing it. I almost quit all of it in order to run the brick. <laughs> so I'm sort of glad 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 glad. Right? So um, thank, thank you guys so much for doing this. I'm going to plug La Mama on Friday. Has They've been doing a series called Downtown Variety every month. The last... Um, I guess since since January, it's been into we've gone international, and this Friday at a special time noon is um, is uh, live from Kenya, and so that's really exciting. There's some video clips of there, there's part of it that's going to take place on these cool buses that are in Kenya that are all like decked out multimedia buses. Um, so uh, check that out. And coming up in May is La Mama Moves, which is always one of my favorite. Um, one of my favorite things at La Mama, the dance. I have two more plugs. Oh, please, yes. Um, we have two co-productions that are continuing right now. One is an incredible uh, film of Prometheus Bound, directed by Ron Ja. Um, it you can check you can what it runs this week. I think Thursday and Friday, so you can you can check that out. And a really beautiful uh, uh, piece called Islands of Contentment. And there's various there's different performers performing different segments like it in, in rep. So um, yeah, those two are two co-productions and you can still check them out. And, you know, if you care, I think that I just want to plug this, like, cause people are tired, you know, the weather's getting warmer, but like these online opportunities to support and show up for theaters, if you care about the theaters, still do them, you know, just, just like you're tired, you know, it's been a long time online. I get it, but like, if there's something you're interested in, go, <laughs> you know, because it really does help artists right now. It really still does help them. They, and they put in a lot of work. And I think a lot of shows that have been in development for a long time are now getting made. And that's, it's just when like people are getting vaccinated and wanting to go outside and being like, I don't have to watch this. It's like, but you're missing out on like the really good stuff because <laughs> this is like, these are the big projects. So anyway, hopefully that stuff may, I mean, maybe the key, right, is that that stuff needs to be on demand, right? Yes. And you yes. need to be able to watch it in the middle of the night. You did yes. your dinner and you went out and you supported your local restaurant and you supported your local dance company and you can go home and then watch these, these, these online programs. Cause we have something coming up in June. I can't talk about it yet, but it was something that I really wanted to do and it's coming up in June and it's something everybody on this show no has heard of this person and sort of this show it's an ongoing thing that he's been doing for years and, and and again yeah you're right now we're starting to open up and i'm like oh no this is that yeah but but it's a bit it'll be available to stream anytime on demand great so like buy buy your tacos yeah 
from the stand on the corner or wherever you get your local tacos and sit and and just and just watch the stuff it makes you feel good yeah um question for you megan because maybe other people have this question uh the only day of the four of your show that i can go to potentially without moving something else is if it's an hour is it an hour is it it's an hour okay it's a little, it's a little under an hour perfect great i'm doing it i'm getting my ticket now yay awesome. <laughs> Everybody's and if it's me. and if anything's sold out we're going to be releasing more tickets so okay you heard it here first um i want to thank um i want to thank chris ignacio who is Yay! running this show behind the scenes thank you chris um and i want to thank uh, mia at la mama because it, it was her idea that i did this a year ago um and so i'm glad to do it again with people that i like and um so uh if you can spare money we're, you know we're hanging on for grants and stuff please make a donation to to the tank, to the brick, to target margin, to La Mama. Um, I forgot to mention, um, thank you, Ralph, in the comments. I forgot to mention that uh, Culture Hub is the um, is the is an offshoot of La Mama, and they're they're sort of spearheading the um, the downtown variety shows, and they've been working very hard with Kenya this week which is um, a crazy time difference if you think about it. So that's why it's at noon on Friday. And thank you guys so much for doing this. And um, everybody get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.